So, um, my presentation is, of course, with my wonderful colleagues, uh, Dr. Hanadi, Dr. Mohammed Ashraf, Dr. Mawra Piloti, and Dr. Khadija Lului. We are discussing today the impact of falsely detecting AI-generated text on academic assessment. So first thing I'd like to talk about is large language models. These large language models are what are known as uh, the text generation programs, the most famous of which is ChatGPT, which I'm sure we've all heard of by now. These are trained on a huge data set of both human and artificial intelligence generated writing. And after quite a bit of training, they are able to learn not only from what they, is on the internet, but from their own output. And even as we continue to engage with certain programs, they are able to learn from our own writing style because certain of them are allow us, allow us to edit them. And they learn to write in our own writing style requiring less and less editing. They are truly fascinating and slightly terrifying. So AI-generated text at this time is able to respond to a human-generated prompt with something that is lexically co coherent, meaning that the sentences flow together smoothly in a paragraph. They're not just individual sentences that don't fit nicely. They are grammatically accurate. They're able to write in multiple genres, so everything from a descriptive essay to an argumentative essay to poetry. They're also able to write in multiple styles, formal, casual, et cetera, even text message, and in multiple languages. But there are two primary differences from human-generated text that we are often looking for when we are using these AI generation detecting uh, software. These are perplexity, which is the diversity of sentence structure. Humans tend to write in an array of different sentence structures. However, the AI generation tends to be more systematic and formulaic. We also are looking for burstiness, which is the predictability of word choice, essentially repetition. Now, AI detection software is trained in a very similar way to the text generative AI, which is that it is trained on a very, very, very large data set of whatever is available online, both human generated and AI generated. Usually this, this, this software responds with a percentage of how likely it believes that the text itself was generated by AI and often even highlights texts that show perplexity and burstiness that is similar to what would be expected from AI generated output. However, some only respond with uh, outcomes such as human or robotic or very robotic and do not highlight the text. So here is the issue with this. When we are writing academic papers, our students often write sentence structure that is very formulaic in and of itself. It's homogeneous in structure and length because it is of an academic structure itself. It is not creative. And also when we are looking at English as a foreign language learners, this is even more complicated because of the fact that they may have reduced exposure to a diverse range of sentence structures and may have less confidence in their writing ability and are more likely to stick to very simple sentence structures, which again is something that would be seen with AI-generated text. The other issue is burstiness. Now again, this is predictable word choices and word repetition. However, if students are writing on a specific topic, they are likely to use the same words multiple times because they are just the topic. They are just words that are related to the topic. And then again, if we look at foreign language learners of English, we will then see that their writing even mimics this even more due to the fact that they may have just limited vocabulary. So unfortunately, the features of AI generated texts are similar in many ways to very well written academic text. And this means that high performing students may be unfairly penalized when all work is run through AI detection software. So in our present study, we examined the work, the handwritten work of 90 female English as a foreign language students from an introductory academic writing course. These were four sections and they were all taught by the same instructor. 
These students were native speakers of Arabic, and they were moderate to proficient users of English, as measured by the IELTS test, the uh, International Language Education System testing. They were between the ages of 18 and 25 years, with an average age of around 19 years. So the materials for this test were handwritten final exams, which were then digitized for analysis. So they were handwritten in class, and then they were typed up for the analysis in order to be entered into these AI analysis programs. They were divided into three groups, high, median, and low. The high group all received grades of 90% to 100% on the essay portion of their final exams. The median group received grades between 60% and 82.5%, whereas the low group received grades of 5% to 50%. And then we chose to use six free AI detection programs. These programs were chosen based on popularity as rated on different social media websites, different teaching forums, even Reddit forums. And also because they are free, they are just more likely to be used by instructors. So our research questions for this study were, is the handwritten writing of EFL, English as a Foreign Language, university students subject to false detection of AI generation by these selected AI detection programs? And we also were very interested in knowing if there is a difference in the false detection rate of AI generation in the handwritten work of EFL students based on the proficiency level of the writing samples used. Now, these writing samples were all handwritten essay portions of a final exam. They were three paragraphs of a persuasive or argumentative essay. They included an introduction, an appropriate final body paragraph, and a conclusion. There was a similar writing prompt for each of the four sections of this class, as again, they were all taught by the same instructor. And the question was, should children under the age of 13 years be allowed to use and then a specific social media platform? And these platforms were very common ones, such as Snap, X, which used to be known as Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. During the exam itself, all personal items removed from students, especially electronics. Students were asked to actually show their phones and be shown putting them on silent and putting them into their bags. Uh, so they hopefully had no way of creating anything that was AI generated in this handwritten exams. They were all graded using the same rubric and by the same instructor. So the AI detection programs, they were all extremely similar. They were all trained on human and AI generated material. Uh, all but one of them reported the percentage likelihood of AI generation. And then the other one reported human, robotic, or very robotic as its output. And so when we entered it into our statistics, they were rated as one, two, and three in terms of the percentage likelihood, just to match it up. The very robotic was considered the highest number. Um, all but this uh, one that does not report the percentages interpreted the score and highlighted the text that mimicked AI generation. So in order to calculate uh, the differences between these groups and if there is an effect of the um, of a per performance and grade on how likely a, a program is to detect that this, this uh, particular piece of writing is AI generated, we entered everything into a repeated measures ANOVA. Of course, we first converted all these percentages into rationalized arc sine units before analysis to reduce the likelihood of violating the assumption of formality. There were only 90 participants after all. Um, we did pairwise comparisons. And I would like to just note that in the actual um, analyses by these different six different programs, every single essay was given some percentage of likelihood of having been created by AI, even the essay that only scored a grade of 5%. And then I would like to let you know that the actual results showed that the handwritten essays of the high scoring group, those who received grades of 90 and above in the actual final exam, were found to have been detected as AI generated at significantly higher ratings as compared to essays in both the low and median scoring groups meaning that their features of their writing 
tend to mimic perplexity and burstiness due to the fact that this is simply academic writing. So being a better student may actually unfairly penalize you or put the student at greater risk of being unfairly penalized by these AI detection programs. So again, just would like to reiterate that AI detection software as it exists right now, of course, it is always evolving and we did use free programs. The ones that are for pay are known to be slightly more reliable. However, these are the ones that are accessible to instructors. But we need to remain aware of the fact that academic writing in and of itself is often very structured and very formulaic, both in sentence structure and in vocabulary. This is especially true of writing in specific courses where certain vocabulary is essential to complete an assignment. Um, and then, of course, when we're looking at English as a foreign language writers, such as the ones that were in this, as the, this study, they often have just less experience using a variety of sentence structures, and they may have just limited vocabulary. And so in, a, in order to be able to write longer essays that convey their message as well in grammatically correct essay uh, sentence structure, they may just simply be repeating the form of sentence that they are most comfortable with. So again, I just would like to reiterate that our highest performing EFL writers were the ones that are at the greatest risk of false detection of AI generated submission. So just some general recommendations for instructors. Um, I would like to advise creating very detailed assignment guides and assignment rubrics that cannot be produced by a single prompt into these AI generators. So if you've ever used ChatGPT or AI Author or Jenny AI or any of the other programs, you know that they require a human prompt and then they give you the output. However, with a very detailed assignment guide, it is very difficult for students to receive output that actually fits this assignment guide with a single prompt. It's also uh, possible that if a student who seems to be high performing in class receives uh, a very high score of likelihood of AI generation on his or her assignment, that you might ask to see earlier drafts of that work in order to see if it still seems to, uh, if this work seems to fit the student's writing style. Uh, you may also prepare, compare this writing to previous submissions to look at the writing style of the student. And at the end of the day, you can always, if there's none of these are available, ask a student to provide a handwritten writing sample. A handwritten writing sample can easily be used for comparison with, the, with any text that has been potentially falsely identified as having been AI generated. I would also like to suggest that when we choose our AI detection programs, we choose them very carefully. We really need to research which programs have the lowest rate of false detections. Some are extremely conservative and will return a grade of even 77% likelihood on one of these high scoring assigned uh, exams. And we also want to select programs that highlight the text that is viewed as being likely to have been AI generated, because this will actually allow us to look at that text and compare it to anything that is not highlighted to see if it shows a similar type of writing structure and to see if it all flows together in a lexically, lexically cohesive way. Uh, the other thing that's very important as instructors is that no matter what courses we teach, we really need to stay up to date on both AI generation programs and AI detection programs. Um, again, as I said, there are new changes being implemented all the time. Uh, some programs allow us to choose the tone of writing and adapt to the user input and editing. And also many programs such as Scriber now have an AI detection feature themselves and will allow you to keep editing and re-editing until the AI detection is rate is lowered to the point that you are less likely to be penalized. So again, as instructors, it is our duty to stay as up to date as possible. And thank you very much for your time. And I have gone over. <laughs>